Good afternoon everyone! In today's video, I'm going to be using our new moving average pullback backtester that we built in our most recent video and take that for a spin inside of the NASDAQ with the overall goal of understanding what is its trading personality like on a 5 minute time frame chart. Now to follow along, you can download the backtester that we just built on our website. The link for the download is in the description box below and it's completely free. You can uh, come to this webpage, either click this green button or scroll down and also click this green button right here to actually download the code. And then you can learn a little bit more in terms of how it was built, things like the switch functions, all the different logic components that are built inside of it by both reading the tutorial along with watching the uh, actual coding portion of this, which I think should help bring everything home. Now, for our actual test cases that we're going to be running using our back tester, these are the ones that I have and I'll be following them basically in order. We'll be running this on a 5 minute 180 day time frame inside of the QQQ ETF. So that's QQQ and that's going to be what we use to essentially try and play this move inside of the NASDAQ or at least understand a bit more about it. We'll start by testing pullback only. This is where we blindly buy any pullbacks to certain EMAs versus waiting for price to confirm that that pullback is being respected and price is now moving away from that particular moving average. So we'll start by testing the pullback only across all of the different EMA and SMA values that we have. We'll choose the highest value there and that'll be our mode of comparison. So we'll compare that to then uh, confirmation, waiting for price to confirm that move again across the EMAs and choose the highest value from that. And this should help us essentially understand is it Better to be a bit more aggressive, buy pullbacks blindly, not really wait for price to confirm, or should you actually wait for price to confirm, and are a lot of pullbacks in fact false confirmations or false signals where price ends up actually breaking outside of the direction of the initial trend. So that's what we're trying to gauge with the first portion of this. Now with the second portion, we'll be testing different risk to reward multipliers, and I think that helps us understand A, how far deep does price go say once price actually does pull back do we typically reverse from the moving average or do we need to give it more room so do we have deeper pullbacks uh, are things like a one to one risk to reward ratio better so something like a one ATR risk for one ATR reward two ATR risk for two ATR reward and same thing with the three and the three we'll test a few different examples here but you can try this extensively using the back tester on your own end We'll also try reversing this where we skew the reward in our favor, so risk 1 to make 2, so risking say 2 ATR to try and make 4 ATR, risking uh, say 3 to try and make 5, uh, maybe even 5 ATR reward, 4 ATR risk, so we'll try a bunch of different combinations where the reward is skewed in our favor. Then we'll try some where the reward is skewed against our favor, where we're actually risking more to try and make a smaller amount. So risking two to try and make one, counterintuitive, but I'm curious just in case this leads to higher PLs, maybe the probabilities are much, much better there. Something of that sort if we find something odd using that. You can also try increasing and decreasing these multipliers using this on your own platform for whatever market you want and see what happens to the overall PL. And then try and mix and match each of these as you start to essentially get a better feel for what tends to work better on whatever you're testing. Now a few things that I discovered inside of the NASDAQ I'll share towards the end of this video, I'll call them my insights. But first I'd like to dive in and take you through this process that we follow to try and gauge some insights and track some PL numbers and see how they vary as we go through some of these different test cases. So coming inside of the chart here, I have the back tester loaded in, and then I have all of the different moving averages plotted right here. Now much of the back testing that we'll do will be focused from this screen, clicking OK, and then clicking apply and see how this number right here changes. This is the PL number. If you don't see that on your end and you've already imported the back tester, you'll need to click global strategy settings and make sure display floating PL study with strategies is turned on. That's this checkbox right here. Now let's start first with our pullback only versus confirmation and I'll start at something uh, let's say in the middle something like a 2 ATR stop, a 2 ATR target. We'll leave that as our starting point. Let's start by testing pullback only. So this is buying blindly pullbacks uh, to the 8 period exponential moving average with a 2 ATR stop and a 2 ATR target. Using that, we can see our PL here is 5025. So that's a pretty nice PL to start off. 
that's giving it not too much risk in terms of some of the numbers we'll be testing. So two ATR stop, two ATR target, pretty nice PL inside of the eight period exponential. Let's see how that changes if we go to the 21. So we're comparing it to 5,025. If we change that to a pullback to the 21, that number drops down to 1624. So, so far we're seeing more aggressive entries at the eight period exponential are a bit better. Let's come down to the 34, same thing, pullback only, a two ATR stop and target. That number drops down even more, 888. So the deeper you try and wait for a pullback inside of uh, the QQQ ETF, the less your PL, especially with the two ATR stop and a two ATR multiplier. And finally, the SMA50, that's the last one we'll test, even lower here, 219.298. So, so far we've seen that eight period exponential moving average with a two ATR two stop waiting for that pullback has a pretty healthy p l of 5,025, especially when we compare it to some of the other alternatives. Now let's switch this to waiting for the confirmation and see if this 5,025 goes up or goes down. So that number dropped in half to 2,283. There's one thing I'd like to test here, but I'll do that when we come back, which is increasing the target and the stop multipliers. But let's first keep this static. So now we'll go to the 21 with a confirmation. The number to compare is 2,283. That number is still lower, so the eight is still winning inside of this bunch. We come into the 34. The 34 is at 1475, so this improved, waiting for the confirmation with the 34. And then finally, the SMA 50 with that two and two at the very edge, that PL, nothing impressive, 552. So, so far, we're seeing that EMA 8 is leading the pack here. And EMA 8, uh, if you have something like a narrow risk to reward, going with the pullbacks is a better way than waiting for the confirmation. Now, let's see what happens if we increase this. So, I'll go from a two to two to three to three. And that first number we had was 5,025. Now that number has dropped, I think, to 2,905, so increasing the risk here. Let's just uh, make sure we have a good baseline. 2-2, two, two, this should be the 5,025. Yep, so 3 and 3 here, we saw decrease the PL. What happens if we go 4 and 4? Four? 4 and 4 increased in comparison to 3 and 3, but still a little bit less than 2 and 2. What happens if we go, say, 5 and 5? Five? 5 and 5. Also 3293, and then the last one we have that we can test in that one-to-one -one that I think is anything close to reasonable, one and one where your PL is still fairly healthy for having a small risk. So for those of you looking for smaller risk strategies inside of the QQQ, something like a one ATR to a one ATR risk or a two ATR to a two ATR risk, EMA8 waiting for that pullback seems to be a better bet. Now let's try and skew the risk reward in our favor. So I'll try say a two target here with a stop multiplier of one. Let's continue to see what happens. So this PL 4,941. So a nice little increase, still nothing above that 5,025. But now we're going for a little bit more in terms of a reward. So you have a little bit more leeway there in terms of the actual probability of the strategy. So that's one thing going for this. And if we contrast that with waiting for a confirmation, that number drops down just a tad. Now, if we move this down to something like an EMA 21, that number has dropped way down. So let's try and make this a little juicier. So let's go to something like say a five and maybe a three here, go back to the eight with the confirmation. Okay, so five and a three, that PL, 4,231. What happens if we increase our risk a bit? So we're widening our stops, a four ATR stop. The 4 ATR stop here has the highest PL that we've seen so far, 6,022. So wider stop, wider targets, leading to some nicer results overall compared to the narrow risk. So fewer trade opportunities here. One way we can see that if we right click this 5 and 4. For that 6,000, it took us 123 trades. And if we compare this to, say, the 2 to 2 that we had initially with the pullback only, the 5,025, we open this 312 trades, so dramatically more trades to try and get to a lesser PL there. That's the benefit of having the five uh, wider risk, wider stop. You also have fewer trades that it takes to get to that level. Let's try increasing that just one more time, maybe something like a six and a three. I'm curious to see what happens there. Six and a three, the PL not that great. So, so far we're seeing five and four to be a nice combination. The last one I might try is just a six and a five, just because I'm curious. 
and that number also decreases. Some things that, by the way, that you may want to pay attention to on this overall P&L graph, I'd like to see for the most part something that slopes positively. Anytime you see this decline right here, it tells you that you either had a series of losses or either one big loss, which ate into a lot of your profits. Compare that to something like, say, that 5 and 4 here, EMA 8, and I think it was waiting for the confirmation. We can see that for the most part here, that P&L graph has been fairly steady and we've been increasing for the most part here with some slight dips but nothing that goes deep inside with loss after loss after loss after loss not a string of losses that really eats into your actual P&L. So that's one thing I like to keep in mind to see an overall positive uh, slope to this uh, graph right here and see that it's steadily increased over time compared to any large bumps one way or the other. So those are some things to look out for. Now let's go back to those insights that I promised I would share. And these are some of the ones that we just discovered. So one, for example, is the PL increase from 2525 to 6,000 when the ATR multipliers were increased from that three to three to a five target and a four stop. So that's a different way stated, 137% increase with wider stops and wider targets. We also saw wider stops, wider targets led to fewer trades with the nicer p &L, so your trade expectancy per trade also increases. Another way to think about that. For those that wanted narrower stops and narrower targets, that two and two and that one and one were good alternatives. Now, something else we also saw is that 34 EMA, if you blindly bought pullbacks to that 34, that p &L was 812. If you were a bit more aggressive there, so up to that 8 EMA, that p &L increased to 4,307, and this was with that one ATR, one ATR. So for those of you that are willing to risk less per trade, that ADMA, while counterintuitive, while probably you feel a bit more pain buying more aggressive entries, has statistically been the better one to buy over the past 180 days on that five minute time frame chart. Another little insight here, PL increase from 3816 to 6000 when we waited for a confirmation on that eight period exponential moving average, as opposed to blindly buying that pullback, especially when you are risking something a bit greater, like that five and four uh, ATR target and ATR stop that we were looking at. So essentially another way to think about this is if you are giving this particular trade or pullbacks rather, wider stops, wider targets, waiting for that confirmation is a nice way to try and justify the additional risk or aggressiveness involved with that eight period EMA entries. And the last thing, which I didn't actually talk about, so I'll go back real quick and touch on, but this works for both the long entries, which is what we focused on primarily, but it also works on short side setups as well. And this is off of that five minute time frame chart. So let's use similar settings to what we already know now. And the one change I'm going to make is from this long entries, I'll turn that off. I'll turn short entries on. If we go first with that five and four, that PL 36.51, so still not too shabby considering that for at least a recent history right now, the past X number of recent days over the past few weeks, we've seen upward inclines, so not that many short entries. Anytime we do see that bearish trend, that's where the strategy kicks into play, and that's where trades are actually executed. So 3,651 there, if I change this down to say a two and two, our baseline that we saw, 1,245, uh, so this number went down just a tad. And let's see what happens if we go with the confirmation here. That number jumps up again. So there's a lot of different things that you can do to play around with this. Things like increase stops, decrease stops, figure out what your trading style is, and then try and plug in the settings that would best represent the true trading style that I think you would have. Do you like to protect your trades a bit more? Do you like to give them a bit more room? Are you willing to risk a bit more, risk a bit less? What is your overall trading style? Plug that into the back tester and use that to create your own set of insights that you can then use on your favorite markets, favorite time frames. Try and build a little cheat sheet for yourself that you can use in your trading. All right, I hope this video was helpful. Take care, everyone. Good luck trading. Be sure to download the back tester from our website if you'd like to start playing around with this for yourself. Again, press this green button and you can download it and import into your platform. There's a video that walks you through how to import as well at the very top here inside of this blue box. All right, take care everyone, good luck trading, and I'll see you in the next video.